All right, so things are getting super weird in the software engineering field. There's been a new technology, GPT Engineer, which pretty much will create the entire application for you. Now, this isn't to scare software engineers or think that their occupation and their dream of developing technology is going away, but this will definitely impact how smaller projects are getting built and potentially how junior all the way up to senior engineers develop for the future. So let's dive in and let's learn about the new library of GPT Engineer. Okay, so here we do not have any type of project created. We just have an empty directory with a virtual environment. And the very first thing we need to do is install GPT Engineer. So we can do a pip install gpt-engineer. Now this will download all the dependencies we need for GPT Engineer and for this project. Now to be able to use GPT Engineer, you need to have an API key to OpenAI, the people who own ChatGPT. Once you get that key, you need to import it into the application. And you can do that by typing in export open AI underscore API underscore key equals and then paste in your API key. This will not be in the video um, for obvious reasons, but make sure you add your API key when you export to this. All right, after you add your API key, we need to add a prompt to our application. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and call this directory app. And now inside app, we need to add a text file of a prompt that will tell GPT engineer what type of application to make. So inside our app, I'm gonna say new file and I'm gonna name this prompt. And inside here, go ahead and type in a prompt of an application you want to create. The prompt is, let's create a fast API application that is an API that generates random usernames that help you think of a name when signing up for websites. The usernames must be between four and 12 characters in length and must use a combo of letters and numbers only. I should be able to request a single username or up to 10 usernames at a single time. So this is the prompt to GPT engineer on what type of application they are going to create. Now to actually use GPT engineer, we need to type in GPT engineer and then the directory where the prompt is. So inside our app directory, there's the prompt. So we're saying GPT engineer app. Now, the first thing it says to you is to use GPT-4. Now, I don't have a GPT-4 license um, for the API endpoints, so it's going to automatically send you to GPT-3.5 Turbo. So it's going to need some areas for clarification. This is what's awesome about GPT Engineer is that it tells you now, hey, I have some more questions I need answered before creating your application. So what programming language should be used to create the fast API application? Should the usernames be case sensitive? Should the usernames be unique? Which are all strong questions. And a couple more questions about how to handle error handling and validation and some other things about rate limiting. Now I already have a message to type in where I say there should be no pattern for the usernames and everything must be lowercase. The same username cannot be generated more than once, so everything must be unique. The API should return everything in Python. So let's go ahead and just send that as the response. And here we get nothing more to clarify. So now this is exactly what it's doing. It's creating the application we just asked for. And it's honestly insane how it does it. It just gets those pieces of information. It's connected to OpenAI and it's going to generate the entire application that we asked for to be able to create these usernames, All right? It says, do we want to execute the code? Press enter for yes, I pressed enter. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it does not. We can see that it failed to connect and run the application here, but it's gonna be super simple to run the application. So from here, we're already in our environment, so we can say pip install fast API. And then let's go ahead and just say pip install uvicorn. And now let's go ahead and look at the application that GPT engineer just created for us. If we open up our workspace, we can see we have this all output dot text, which is just saying what the requirements were. We have our file, which is just going to say fast API up front. And then we have our application.py file. 
And this is where the magic happened. This is where he says app equals fast API. We have a class that is creating our username generator with the logic of the rules we put in. And it has two API endpoints, creating and generating one username or multiple usernames based on a length. So let's go ahead and run this application. So let's CD into our app and then CD into our workspace. And let's type in Uvicorn application app dash dash reload. All right, so this will open up our URL endpoint of 127.0.01 port 8000, which is just our local host on our port 8000, where we can say slash docs, which will bring us to our Swagger documentation. And we can use our first API endpoint of username slash length. Let's pass in the length and say eight and execute it. And we can see that we just get a random username back of just random characters and numbers. And if we scroll down to the next API endpoint, we can say we want the length to be 10 characters and we want 10 different usernames and click execute. And here we get back a list of just 10 different usernames that we can proceed with, which is just a random combination of characters and numbers. Now, my thoughts on the future of AI and GPT engineering is kind of insane. I mean, a year ago, there was no idea and no knowledge of this stuff getting built to majority of software engineers and individuals in tech. OpenAI has been working on this for like a decade, but it wasn't super public and well known among everybody. So this is all new to me, who's a senior engineer and to so many other people and AI is just taking everything by storm. Now, one area of software engineering that I'm sort of nervous for are junior devs and people that are brand new to the field. The reason I'm nervous for these individuals is they are on their way of learning software engineering while OpenAI and ChatGPT can do a lot of the easy, normal things that junior devs used to work on as they grew within their craft. I can see this being a real challenge for companies and for people because software engineering kind of has a higher barrier of entry than a lot of fields that I think that barrier of entry is going to get even higher because gone are the days you can just bring in somebody to work on non-essential pieces of code as they learn in their craft because things like GPT engineer and chat GPT and open AI and Copilot and code whisperer and all of these things and all these different pieces of AI can do a lot of the junior level software development. And I mean, it's only going to get smarter and smarter from here. I do have faith in software engineering though. I do believe, you know, with these tools, everyone's just going to get better at code. The understanding of code is going to be easier and just the overall rapid development of software is going to get better and better. We're in an odd phase now, but I, I believe that in a few years, we're going to look back at this and it's all just going to feel normal. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.